Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple attendance sheet for a group of employees. In my example, I have a list of names, I have a time in, and then I have a time out when employees leave work. In between, they take a break. So I have the break start time and the break finish time. We need to calculate the total worked hours and because each employee should be working regularly eight hours, any number of hours above the eight hours is considered an overtime work. And there is a regular rate for each employee and an overtime rate. Based upon that, we need to calculate the total pay for each employee. That requires understanding what is a date and what is a time in Excel. So I'll go to the basics and then we'll come back to this worksheet. A date is stored in Excel as a number. Day number one is the 1st of January 1900. I can enter a date as a dynamic value by using the function equal to date. And then I hit tab, I close the bracket, and when I hit tab, I get the date. That's dynamic, so tomorrow it will be different, next week it will be different, and so on. I can do the same for time by using a different function, equal now. And then I hit tab, I close the bracket, the now function brings the date and time. So when I hit enter, I can see the date and time. As I told you, a date is stored as a number, and to reveal that number, I need to change the formatting. The most important thing to understand when dealing with time is the effect of formatting on what you see. So if I go to the number group on the home tab and I switch to general, now today's date is 43,974. If today's date is an incremental number, so what is time then? Time is a decimal fraction of a day because tomorrow will be 43,975, which means I added one. This one equals 24 hours. So if I want to reveal the time, then I can use the general formatting as I did a second ago, or I can use the shortcut control shift tilde. So time is a decimal fraction of a day. This fraction that you see here represents the fraction of a day. I can also enter the date as a static date that doesn't change when I reopen the workbook next day or next week by using the shortcut control semicolon. If I hit tab, I move to column C. I can enter the time as a static time by hitting the shortcut control shift semicolon. If you reveal the number stored behind the scene, I'm selecting these two cells and I hit the shortcut control shift tilde. Now I can see the number stored behind the scene, whether for a date or for time. When you enter a date, like what I have in column E, then you type the hours, then a colon, then the minutes, then a space. You might be entering the seconds as well, but the most important thing is to type a space and type AM or PM. Now I want to show you the number corresponding to each one of these times. So I'm selecting the cells in column F and I want to copy to the right. I'll be using the shortcut control R to copy to the right. I want you to note that for 6 p.m., because I don't have a space between the minutes and p.m., then Excel perceives it as text and it is left aligned. I want to reveal the numbers for these times. So I'm going to use the shortcut control shift tilde, all of them are decimal numbers reflecting the time except the one having no space. So if I add a space between the minutes and P, I'll be typing a space. The moment I do that, it is right aligned denoting that this is time. Now I can copy it to the right, Control R, and now I can change it to a decimal fraction, Control Shift tilde. Now that we understand how Excel stores time, we need to talk about time math. So I go to the next worksheet where I have a list of employees. I have the time they clocked in and the time they clocked out. And in between, I have the lunch break, the lunch start, and the lunch finish. And I would like to calculate how many hours each employee worked. And because we are dealing with numbers, all what I need to do is to subtract the smaller number from the bigger number. I'm subtracting the earlier time from the later time. Let's do that. In column F, I'll be typing an equal sign. And for the first part of the day, I'm selecting the later time, the lunch start, and then I type a minus sign and I click on the time in. So I'm subtracting the earlier time from the later time. 
If I hit enter, it gives me the fraction of the day. But I also want to add the time work after lunch. So I'm putting my function in the edit mode F2 and I'll type a plus sign. And then I say later time, which is the timeout, minus the earlier time, which is the lunch finish time. And when I hit enter, I'm getting the fraction of the day this employee worked. How can I convert it into hours? I need to put it in the edit mode one more time. I need to wrap all these cell references in brackets and I multiply them by the number of hours in a day, which is 24. So I'll be typing multiplied by 24. When I hit enter, I get the number of hours worked and I can copy my function all the way down. I double click and send it down. And because I have in column G the hourly rate for each employee, multiplying the hours worked by the rate gives me the earning of that employee. Calculating the difference in time in a morning shift is pretty straightforward. The problem is, what happens if we want to calculate time in a night shift? Let me switch to the next worksheet, night shift. And here I want to show you an employee working at 8 p.m. and leaving at 4 a.m. Usually we subtract the later time from the earlier time, but Excel will not recognize that 4 is bigger than 8. So let's see what happens if I create a regular subtraction. I type an equal sign, and as I did with the morning shift, I'm selecting the later time in C11, and then I type a minus sign, and I click on the earlier time. When I hit enter, this is what I'm getting. That's not correct. Even if I multiply it by 24 to get the hours worked, I hit F2. I put my blinking cursor after the equal sign. I type 24 multiplied by. I open bracket and close bracket for the subtraction. Now if I hit enter, this employee worked minus 16 hours. That's totally wrong. And if I copy down, everything will be incorrect. So with night shift, we have a problem. How do we solve this problem? We solve this problem by using a mod function. There are different ways of solving it, but I have a preference to using the mod function. The mod function returns the remainder of a division, and the division consists of a numerator and a denominator. My numerator will be the difference between the start and finish time. Let me calculate it in this column. So I want to calculate the numerator and I'll be using it in a mod function. So I type an equal sign and I simply select the later time, C11 minus the earlier time, and I hit enter. That's the amount of time work and I copy it all the way down. And this is what I'm getting. This is formatting. I need to convert it into a general formatting and I get the fraction. It's negative, but when I put it in a mod function, the mod function requires a numerator, which is the result of this subtraction, and a denominator or a divisor, which will be 1. Let's see how it works. I type an equal sign, and I type mod, and then I hit tab. The mod function requires a numerator, which is what I just calculated, and then I type a comma, and my denominator will be 1, so I'm selecting it from column E. I close the bracket, and when I hit enter, I'm getting the fraction of the day. This employee worked from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m., that's 8 hours, that's equal to 0.333 of a day. I learned from the Excel help how the mod function is behaving. The mod function is subtracting the denominator from the numerator, and it's multiplying it by the integer of the numerator divided by the denominator, this fraction that you see here. So let me break down the steps of the mod function. Based upon what I learned from the help, I'll be typing equal. I select the numerator, which is what I calculated in column D minus the denominator that I have in column E, and then I want to multiply it by the integer. The int function always pushes down. So if you calculate the integer of 2.3, it will push it down to 2. If you calculate the integer of minus 2.5, it will push it to minus 3. So I hit tab for the integer function. I want this time the numerator and the forward slash and the denominator, and I close the bracket. So when I hit enter, I'm getting the same exact result. 
We want to understand how Excel is processing this calculation. So I select the cell having the function. I go to the formulas tab of the ribbon and I click on evaluate formula. The evaluate formula dialog box opens and I can see the function that I created. Every time I click evaluate, it replaces the underlined cell reference by its value. So I click evaluate. This is the contents of cell D11. And then I click evaluate to replace E11. And then it will replace D11 inside the integer function. And then it will replace E11 inside the integer function. Look at the result of the integer function because it pushes down. When I hit evaluate one more time, it will be evaluating it and it will be returning minus 1. Minus 1 multiplied by the 1, then it becomes minus 1. And I subtract it from the numerator and I get this result. Let's hit close. If I copy this function all the way down, it will work just fine. And the advantage of the mod function, if you have a mix of morning shifts and night shift, it will always work. Let's see how we do that. Now, let's calculate the work hours for these employees. These are night shifts, so I'll be typing equal mod, and then I open bracket. The mod function requires a numerator and a denominator. The numerator will be the difference between the later time and the earlier time. So equal mod, the later time will be the break start. I type a minus sign and then I click on the time in and then I hit comma. What's the divisor? What's the denominator? It's one. I close the bracket and then I hit enter. So I get the first shift or the first part worked of the day after lunch there is another part i put my function in the edit mode by hitting f2 and i say plus mod i hit tab i want the later time which is the timeout minus the earlier time which is the break finish and then comma the mod function requires a divisor so i type one I close the bracket, and now when I hit enter, this employee worked 0.3 of a day. We need to convert it into hours, so I put my function one more time in the edit mode F2, and before the mod function, I'll be typing 24 multiplied by, and I'll be including all the functions in brackets to maintain the order of operation. I open a bracket, and at the end, I close the bracket. And then I hit enter, and this employee worked 7.25 hours. If I drag down, now I was able to calculate the number of worked hours and the earnings for this employee. In a real work situation, you might have a mix of morning shifts and night shifts. So let's see an example. I click on real. And here I have the same list of employees. I have a conditional formatting, which highlights in yellow the night shifts. I would like to calculate the total hours. And because each employee should be regularly working eight hours a day, if an employee works over the eight hours, that's an overtime rate. So I want to calculate the regular hours. I want to calculate the overtime hours. And because we have a rate for each one, we'll be calculating the regular pay, the overtime pay, and the total pay. Let's get started. For the total hours, I select this entire range. And I'll be using my mod function because it works just fine whether a morning shift or a night shift. I'll be typing equal sign 24 multiplied by and I open bracket. I want my first mod function. So I type mod and then I hit tab. The numerator is the later time which is the break start minus the earlier time which is the time in and then hit comma and my divisor will be one and I close my first mod function. I want to add the second shift, so I add a plus sign and the second mod function. I type mod and then I hit tab. I want the later time, which is the timeout, minus the earlier time, which is the break finish, and then comma. My denominator will be 1. I close the bracket for the second mod function and I close the bracket for including the two functions and multiplying them by 24. To populate this function, I hit control enter. If this employee worked 8.25, that means 8 hours should count for the regular rate. And the 0.25, this is an overtime, it has a different rate. Let's calculate the regular hours. I'm selecting the whole column, and I need to compare to the regular hours available in O2. So I'll be typing equal if, and then I hit tab. If this number here is greater than the regular hours, 
and I lock it by hitting F4, then just return the regular hours, comma, return the regular hours, which is O2, and I lock it by hitting F4. Otherwise, what do you want to do? The value, if false, is to return the hours worked in cell F2. I close the bracket for the if function, and then I hit Control enter to populate this function. So in this column, column G, the highest number you will see is the regular hour. But let's say for this employee who worked 7.25, then we see that number which is less than the regular hours. Now let's calculate the overtime. To calculate the overtime, I'm selecting the whole range, and I need to compare the numbers in column F, the total working hours, to the numbers in column G. If they are higher, I need the difference. Otherwise, I need zero. So I type equal if, I hit tab. If this number is greater than the regular hours, then in this case, give me the difference F2 minus G2. Otherwise, I hit comma, the value if false, I need zero, and I close the bracket. To populate this function, I hit control enter. Now that we have a column for the regular hours and a column for the overtime, it's easy for me to calculate the regular pay and the overtime pay. The regular pay is calculated by multiplying the regular hours by the regular rate. The overtime is calculated by multiplying the overtime hours by the overtime rate, and I'm going to do both of them simultaneously. I select the two columns and I type an equal sign. I click on the regular hours multiplied by the regular rate, and because the order of columns is the same, I can simply populate them by hitting Control enter and that's very easy. The final step is to calculate the total pay, and I want to show you a nice functionality, so I'll go to the Home tab. I'm going to calculate that in one single step. So I select the two columns and the Total Pay column, and I go to the Home tab, to the right side of the Home tab, one single click on AutoSum, and everything is calculated. I finished creating my simple attendance sheet. We learned in this tutorial how Excel is perceiving date and time, and then we calculated the difference between a later time and an earlier time. This works fine for a morning shift when the later time is bigger than the earlier time, but it doesn't work fine with a night shift, so we used instead the mod function, which works for both situations, whether morning shift or night shift.